to make yourself as comfortable as you can. I'm going to use some noting methods. When we do the breath meditation for the first five minutes, I'm going to suggest that you note one, two, and three. One at the nose, two at the chest, three at the abdomen. And then on the out breath that you note three, two, and one. Three at the abdomen, two at the chest, one at the nose. Just mentioning again, trying to be aware of a feeling as a feeling. No visualization, no controlling. And if you find yourself trying to control, that's normal too. And what you do is you're just aware of that and you try to relax that in the mind which is trying to control. And if you can't, that's okay too, but just be aware of that intending to relax it. So first of all, one in breath, eyes closed. Just trying to feel the feeling. At the nose, as the breath comes in, note one, mentally, quietly. As it passes through the chest, note two. As it passes through the abdomen, note three. As it leaves, three, two, one. At your own pace, natural breath. Breathing in, one, two, three. Breathing out, three, two, one. We'll do that for the next five minutes. With sounds, you just try to be aware of sounds without actually listening. Sometimes people note hearing, hearing. Intending to be aware of the feeling, so placing your attention on the physical feelings. Knowing, trying to know an entire in-breath. Nose, chest, abdomen, one, two, three. Abdomen, chest, nose, three, two, one. And you just use the counting as a way of restraining the thinking mind and as a way of being with your meditation object. The meditation object here is the feeling of the breath. Breathing in, one, two, three. Breathing out, three. Two, So we have those feelings, the beginning, middle and end of an in-breath, nose, chest, abdomen, beginning, middle, end of an out-breath, abdomen, chest, nose, one, two, three, three, two, one.
using the breath meditation to be more fully mindful in the present moment. Well, that means not picking up thoughts about the past, not sending the mind into the future, or not sending it out. Just allowing the mind to rest in the parameters of the physical body, aware of the feelings, physical feelings of the breath, nose, chest, abdomen, abdomen, chest, nose, using that noting just to help you to be with the breath, one, two, three, three, two, one. Also use the breath in a way, bringing in fresh energy, establishing clarity of mind, presence of mind, and with the out breath in particular, putting things down, releasing, letting go. So whatever the various mind states are, the thoughts and breathing out, you can try to just put them down. You don't need them now, no need to hang on to them, allowing the mind to rest. Breathing in, establishing clarity of awareness, presence of mind that knows a feeling as a feeling. Breathing out, putting down the thoughts, putting down the past, allowing it to be where it is, gone, the past. Breathing in, one, two, three. Breathing out, three, two, one. And change the mental noting now. Still being aware of the feeling, the nose, chest, abdomen, but on the in breath, just noting one. Aware of the feelings, abdomen, chest, nose, out breath, noting one. We do this up to five. Next in breath, two. Next out breath, two. Three. Three. Up to number five. And then after the fifth one, once again, breathing in five, breathing out five, back down to one. We're using this mental loading just to help us to be with the feeling of the breath and restraining the mind gently from wandering. 
one of the wonderful things about counting the breath, many times we want something profound, something sacred, something auspicious, amazing mantra. But one of the really wonderful things about counting the breath is that as soon as you lose your mindfulness, you don't know what number you're up to. You forgot what number, and that's a great way of knowing that you let the mindfulness go. So the point isn't the numbers, the point is the quality of presence of mind, and the numbers are helping you to keep the mindfulness in the body and to really be with the breath, so counting the breaths. One in breath, and in breath one, and out breath one. to five, and in breath five, and out breath five, and then you go back the other way, back down to one. method to use at the beginning of meditation to help the mind to become a little more present, a little more collected. And try not to get upset if you lose track of the number, it doesn't matter. You just start again. Establishing that present moment awareness of the feelings of the breaths. One, one, you just start again. Still trying to be aware of the beginning, middle and end of an in-breath, or the entire in-breath, the feelings involved, and then knowing the feelings of the out-breath, coming into the body, leaving the body, and using the noting method to help you to be mindful and to help restrain the mind from thinking about other things. trying to be aware of the breathing when it comes to the various noises that can impinge on consciousness and try not to let them impinge it's just awareness so when there's a feeling of impingement the sense of self that's listening liking not liking and so when we picking up the breath meditation trying to pull all of that down aware of a feeling as a feeling, and then just aware of sounds, aware of hearing. And it's possible for the mind to become more and more spacious and to be able to hear all of these sounds without clinging, just aware of sounds in space, arising and ceasing placing our attention upon the physical feeling of each in-breath and the physical feelings of each out-breath using this as our skillful means to generate clarity of mind putting down deluded thoughts putting down the past, not picking up the future not picking up perceptions of others, not picking up perceptions of oneself thoughts about yourself just aware of physical feeling, 
That's the basis of this meditation. And then upon that basis then whatever thoughts come up, just seeing a thought as a thought. And whatever mental feelings there are in the heart area, aware of them, but not making anything out of them, using the breath to ventilate and on the out breath putting things down, bringing a sense of present moment clarity into the body and mind experience, using the breath, generating mindfulness on the in-breath and putting things down on the out-breath. Hopefully, as the meditation progresses, there's a sense that one can relax into the awareness. Things become more relaxed and more pleasant. At first, you have to force yourself a little bit, pay attention to those feelings. Don't let the mind wander after some time. Just resting with the awareness of breath. Once again, we're going to change the mental noting method now. In Thailand, we use the word Buddha, synonym for Buddha, and with all these wonderful connotations. So, breathing in Bud, breathing out Do. If there is still quite a bit of thinking, breathing in Buddha, breathing out Buddha. In Thailand, they translate the meaning of this word. It's a kind of a mantra, as knowing, wakeful, radiant. So this mindfulness, a radiant, present, moment, clear quality. The Buddha was the one who knew things as they truly were, as they truly are awakened, radiant. So this is a word with the most wonderful positive connotations. We're picking up that word, breathing in Bud, breathing out Do. Affirming the capacity to be awake, aware, clear, bright. But not adding anything to the experience of the breath, not visualizing anything, not doing anything other than being aware and allowing other things to fall away. And just knowing a feeling as a feeling. And as the mindfulness gets more clear, you can know more subtle feelings. The breath coming at the nose is a little cooler than the breath that leaves the nose. You know the feelings with more nuance. You pay attention more carefully. You bring a quality of care. Be interested in this breath. Knowing those feelings. Breathing in Bud. Breathing out Do. Aware of physical feelings, aware of one in-breath, aware of one out-breath.
We also train keeping that awareness within the body, so you're also aware of the spaces between the breaths. Breathing in, knowing the feelings, nose, chest, abdomen, and then there's a space, keeping that presence of mind in the body, breathing out, abdomen, chest, nose, knowing those feelings, and then there's a space, and even in that space, just having that presence of mind. Knowing the beginning, the middle, and the end of each in breath, each out breath, and even the spaces in between, holding that clear awareness in the present moment in the physical body. Breathing in, boot, breathing out, do. In about five more minutes, we'll be doing some loving kindness meditation. I'd just like to encourage you now to really try and establish that present moment clarity. And really being in the body. Arjun Samedo often says a lot of what we have to practice with in meditation is boredom. It's really important to be willing to practice with the ordinary boring mind because before your meditation deepens you have to be willing to just be still and a lot of what you have to be still with is tedious, boring but if you don't learn how to be with that with some quality of contentment when these compulsive energies come up in the mind that want to go on to the next thing, on to the next thing, on to the next thing it's just endlessly running around in samsara. It never ends. And it never deepens. And so you have to be willing to be with the boring mind, with its tedious thoughts and the same mind states that you don't want to see again, but there they are. This is really a large part of practice. And being willing to be with this with patience, with contentment, what you'll find 
is that that same boring, tedious mind state that you don't want to be with, if you just stay still, falls away. And then you experience the bliss of a clear, radiant mind. But you have to be willing to be with it until it ceases. Otherwise, come back to your meditation and it's going to be the same boring, tedious mind states that you never get to see through. You have to be willing to practice with the boringness. You have to be willing to practice with the restlessness. You have to be willing to practice with the drowsiness. These are these five hindrances. I'll just go through those. A lot of what comes up in your meditation is the five hindrances. Theravada is wonderful in its short, pithy, helpful lists. Sensual craving, the pleasant thing you'd rather be having, rather than just being with the breath. Or aversion, the things you want to get rid of. That's the second hindrance. Craving for, craving not for. So understand that you have to see that clearly, not pick it up, allow it to cease. And then the mind becomes peaceful. If you get up and you go and chase for the craving, or chase away the craving, you're just making more karma. The mind will become peaceful. So that's first two, craving for, craving not for. The third one, the sloth and torpor, so sleepiness and dullness. A lot of the problem of modern people is because we are busy, we are restless, we are distracted, we come to meditate, the mind is genuinely tired, and so you find it falls asleep. I recommend to my students that they meditate in the morning, before they get busy, before checking their phones, turn the phone off, don't check the computer. Meditate in the morning when the mind's already rested, establish the clarity at the beginning of the day. The most important thing is your spiritual practice, so do it first, not last. Establish that clarity and bring that clarity into your day. With sleepiness and dullness, just bringing awareness to know it. You might think, oh, the mind's too sleepy, I'm not going to meditate, I'll get up. No. Whatever's in the mind, that's what you be mindful of. And you use the breath, breathe a little more deeply. Breathing in, put, breathing out, do Use the breath to wake the mind up. Try to be aware of those feelings. Breathe a bit more deeply if you can. In generating awareness, the mind becomes awakened. dullness and sleepiness falls away from the mind when the mind wakes up. It wakes up by having right mindfulness, right collectedness. It becomes radiant, clear and awake, right in that very space where the dullness and the sleepiness was. Brilliant clarity can arise, but only if you maintain the mindfulness to the point of seeing the cessation of that hindrance. Another hindrance, restlessness. So the mind running around, that's the other thing. If you keep running around, allow your mind to keep running around, when you come to meditate, the mind's going to be running around. And it's only through staying with it, 
until it steals. Ajahn Chah gives a wonderful analogy. In northeast Thailand, you have these little chicken coops. They're made out of rattan. And you place your chicken under it. And the chicken runs around and runs around and runs around. And at a certain point, it sits down by itself. He says meditation is like that. If you try to hold the chicken down, the chicken gets very agitated. And it will get away. But if you place this little coop over it, it runs around, it runs around, it scratches, it picks, and at a certain point it sits down. So meditation is like that. You have to be with the chicken in mind until it sits down by itself after scratching and pecking. See the nature of restlessness. It ceases. But when the restlessness ceases, clarity, serenity, peacefulness, I'm going to move into some loving kindness meditation now. We're all familiar with the various types of delusions that frequent our minds and types of suffering, mental suffering that that can give rise to. 
And so just ask you now, at this point in your life, and do you still have suffering? And then just considering where it is that the suffering of our life is actually experienced. I think we'll find that the suffering of our life is experienced in this heart area, in the mind. So, bringing some tender awareness into the heart area. And just aware of the fact that there is still some suffering. This is, a, I believe, a very important step in meta cultivation. Acknowledging the suffering of the unenlightened saint. Just being aware of it, acknowledging it, no judgment at all. And no pushing away. Just a tender awareness. And then we try to respond to that skillfully. And just as you would try to respond to a friend suffering with compassion, with kindness, and just listening perhaps. Someone's talking about a painful experience, listen, give ear, empathy, and just hear them. They might find that very helpful. And then you might offer some advice if it's wanted, if it's helpful to that person, but this stage of just being aware of and listening with empathy. So we offer this to ourselves, aware of the various ways that we suffer, and trying to have some tender regard, and in a way, even respect. I like to encourage people to have respect for their suffering. Why would you respect suffering? You respect it because it's a very powerful phenomenon. And if you just hate suffering, it's actually not a very workable situation. So you're aware of the suffering and you just hate it. The mind won't be very bright in that experience. But when you're aware of suffering and you have some kind of an appreciation, even awe, wow, this is an amazing phenomenon, impressive, this suffering thing, wow. Then opening the heart in response to the suffering, and recognizing that it isn't always there, it's not your ultimate nature, mind states coming in, coming out, some of them very painful. And recognizing that there's another potential. We wish ourselves, may I be well, may I be happy. And breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may I be happy. very important to just allow the suffering to be as it is first. It's like listening to your friend first before clobbering them over the head with the advice. Listen, hear, feel the suffering. Okay, that's a valid experience. Allow some spacious awareness around it. And then sincerely wish that the mind could be free from this without pushing it away, without hating it, without wanting to destroy it. Just this beautiful wish, may I be well, may I be happy, 
Breathing in, we use this breath energy and establish this mindfulness now. This beautiful breath energy coming through the heart area, chest area. And now we can use this. Breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may I be happy. And so as you breathe in, allow the warmth of loving kindness to arise in the heart area. Even in that same space where there's suffering, you can allow some warmth to come into that experience. Sometimes you can surround the feeling of suffering with a different feeling. A beautiful metta citta, pure intentions. Sometimes called loving friendliness, sometimes called unconditional love. So what I was trying to emphasize is when we allow the suffering just to be as it is, there's a quality of loving acceptance. Breathing in, I allow this experience, whatever it is, I accept it as it is. Breathing out, may I be well, may I be happy. Breathing in, allowing the mind to be as it is, just as it is in the present moment. At the same time, engaging the mind's dynamic capacity to generate something else, but not coming from aversion. Coming from metta citta, the heart of loving kindness. Breathing in, may I be well, allowing some warmth to arise in the heart area. Breathing out, may I be happy. And then you allow that warmth to spread through the chest area. Suffuse the upper body with this felt experience of the mind state of loving kindness. Breathing in, may I be well, the warmth of loving kindness arising in the heart area. Breathing out, may I be happy, allowing that warmth to spread through the chest, a loving acceptance, and then also generating the goodwill, unconditional love, and then loving friendliness, loving kindness. Breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may I be happy if you can. Allow the feeling of metta to fill the entire upper body. On the in-breath, you generate it right there in the core of your being. May I be well. Love. Unconditional love. And breathing out, may I be happy, then allowing it to spread, radiating out from the heart area, encompassing the upper body, Breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may I be happy. Just do that for another minute or so, and then I'll encourage you to bring to mind someone else to radiate loving kindness towards as well. It's very important to establish it for this being, one among all beings, before you try to radiate it to all beings. If there is a kind of a latent habit of withholding the metta to oneself, it won't actually be able to become very expansive and very radiant because it has to radiate from this being. So wholeheartedly feel this being with love and kindness so that you can radiate it to all beings. Don't withhold any metta from yourself. totally saturate and bathe the mind in this energy so that you have it as a resource to share. Breathing in, may I be well. Filling the heart with loving kindness. Breathing out, be radiating that warmth of loving acceptance, loving friendliness, goodwill, all throughout your own body.
Now I ask you to bring to mind somebody who you find it easy to have feelings of loving kindness and appreciation for. It might be a teacher, a friend. Breathing in, may I be well, and breathing out. Visualize this person in front of you smiling and breathing out, may that person be well, you can say their name. Breathing in, may I be well and happy. Breathing out, may this person, my friend, my teacher, be well, be happy. So on the in-breath, regenerating, replenishing that love and kindness with your beautiful, pure intentions. And then breathing out and radiating it outwards. Start with beings that it's easy to have loving kindness for. Breathing in, may I be well, may I be happy. Breathing out, may this other person who may also have some suffering, may they be well, may they be happy. to bring to mind now one or two other people that you find it easy to have metaphor. You see these two or three people in front of you smiling and breathing in, may I be well, may I be happy. Generating a loving kindness in the chest area. Breathing out, may these people, my friends, my teachers, my relatives, may they be well, may they be happy, then radiating that loving kindness. You don't have to think about where they are, you don't have to try to send the mind all the way around the other side of the world. Just see them in front of you and see them smiling and just trust that that capacity of the mind, the blessings will reach them from where you are. Breathing in, may I be well, may I be happy. Breathing out, may these people be well, may they be happy. And then just coming back to the experience of oneself. Breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may I be happy. Breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may I be happy. And now I'm going to ask you to bring to mind somebody that you feel neutral feelings towards. So somebody that you know that you don't particularly feel that you like or don't like. You might pass them on the street each day. Somebody in the shop. Somebody you know here, you don't know very well, just feel neutral towards. Breathing in, may I be well, allowing loving kindness to be regenerated in the mind. 
breathing out. May this person, this neutral person, be well, be happy. We're training the mind to have a capacity to have loving kindness towards larger numbers of beings. First for the people that it's easy, and then the neutral people, of which the numbers are huge. Breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may this neutral person be well, may they be happy. And just understanding as you wish to be free from suffering, as you wish to realize your ultimate potential. Other people also don't want to suffer, want to be happy. Many people pursuing happiness in deluded ways, which will result in greater suffering, unfortunately. But we wish them well. May they meet with the causes that lead them to end their suffering, to be free from suffering. So when we wish people, we have to empower those words with meaning. What does it mean to be well? To be well, free from delusion, to have good teachers, to have good opportunities, and to be able to use those opportunities. And in a way, that's what we're wishing for people, to be truly well. May they meet these wisdom teachings, meet wise beings, meet teachers, meet opportunities to practice, train their minds. May they have similar good fortune. Breathing in may I be well. Breathing out may this neutral person be well. Breathing in may I be happy. Breathing out may this neutral person be happy. And if you can, try to bring to mind one or two other neutral people. Seeing them in front of you, smiling. Breathing in and as you wish yourself well. You also wish these other people well. As you wish to be happy, you wish these people have happiness in the causes of happiness. Breathing in, generating it in one's own body and mind. Breathing out, radiating it towards other people's bodies and minds. Breathing in, may I be well, may I be happy. Breathing out, may these other neutral people be well, be happy. the last few minutes of the meditation now. I'm going to take a bit of a leap. Breathing in, may I be well. And breathing out, may all beings be well. Breathing in, may I be happy. Breathing out, may all beings be happy. Again, trying to emphasize this direct to the heart, direct from the heart, direct to the mind, direct from the mind felt experience. Breathing in may I be well. Breathing out may all beings be well. not discriminating. 
So allowing this loving kindness energy to flow out in all directions above, below, around, everywhere. Breathing in, may I be well, may I be happy. Breathing out, may all beings be well, may all beings be happy. Breathing in, may I be well, may I be happy. The warmth of loving kindness in your own heart area. Breathing out, may all beings be well, may all beings be happy. May all beings have the causes of happiness. Breathing in, may I be well, may I be happy. Breathing out, may all beings be well, may all beings be happy. Once again, just coming back to the perception of yourself for this mind and body. Breathing in, may I be well. Breathing out, may I be happy. One of the things I like to get people to do at the end of a meditation session, now that the mind is a little more sensitive and receptive, to make some kind of a commitment to yourself, 
that I will take care of my mind, my life a little more. Understanding that if I aspire to be well and to be happy, I have to maintain ethical standards, and can be precepts, to be consistent in your practice, the spiritual practices. As we do tend to get busy and distracted, so after the meditation session, understanding that if I am to experience greater peace and happiness and help others, I need to take care of my life, make some kind of a commitment, motivated by loving kindness for myself and others, I commit to being more consistent in my spiritual practices, being a little less distracted, Try to start your day with your spiritual practice, not leave it till the end of the day. Set some kind of motivation, aspiration to actually lay the causes for happiness in yourself. And it will allow you to share that happiness with more beings. dedicating the merit. So dedicate that however you wish to. That could be to specific people you know who might have suffering, might need some good energy, or it might be to all beings, it might be to your teachers, as you see fit. Again, just in the mind, just from a deep space in your heart, once it's calm and peaceful, full of love, then you just share that, bring to mind this person or all beings that dedicate the merit of this spiritual practice of this meditation to this person, these people, may they be well, may they be happy, may they be free from suffering, may they have every abundance, every support, every auspicious blessing in their life. Okay, so I'd like to give you the opportunity to stand up and stretch your legs if you'd like to. And then, uh, if anyone needs a bathroom. And I just ask, who feels more peaceful than they did an hour and a half ago? Very good. See, so these temporary liberations. You do have capacity to experience peace. It's a matter of applying oneself correctly. Confidence in the method, confidence in your ability and in the consistency.